I think it's the first female character that actually looks like a fighter. You do an attack that goes into stance, attack that goes into stance, and, you know, we'll see what it looks like in a few days, but she feels really, really awkward and clunky to play. You have to rush people down with stance mix-ups like this. My guess is Lydia is not going to be seen as strong. What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, and finally, the character we've all been waiting for. It's not Tekken 8, unless it's got Lydia Sobieska, said no one ever. Poor Lydia, like what, two days before she drops, we can play her? They show a Heihachi trailer. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but if you want to kill a character's mojo... That's what you do. So that has sort of killed the hype for Lydia a little bit for me. Uh, and then I played her, and it sort of killed more hype. I'm gonna get into it. I just think she's... She's quite boring. Sorry, that's my opinion. She's kind of boring. And uh, she, it, she feels super stiff to play and clunky. It's basically gonna be Reyna again. Just a Reyna that feels way less rewarding and much less smooth. Just a much clunkier Reyna, in my opinion. Although I do like the, the, the stances there, very cool. Uh, but I, I love her character model, she looks great, and she's actually a female character. I don't know if you can see it here, but she has a ton of muscle tone. She actually looks like a female fighter. She's very low on body fat, and she, you know, the muscles are impressive. So, I think it's the first female character that actually looks like a fighter. So, that's a really cool thing about Lydia. And we also got this stage, which I think is beautiful. It looks much better than it ever did in Tekken 7. Oh, look, we can do it here. It's like, you have day, which is this one. But then after a couple of rounds, it goes into evening. Which is super beautiful, I think. This is so cool, I think. And it, it, it really looks great. And then you can go to night, even. Which is final, final round. And it's night. And I think it's a, it's a really great stage. It's super cool. Uh, so we can stick at night here. Um, but so that's the best thing about Lydia. It's the stage. No, I, I don't want to be too mean. But so yeah, I'm a little bit bored of her, so why does she feel clunky to play? Uh, let's start with her lows. They're all god-awful. I think, uh, you remember when I, everyone was saying when Eddie dropped his S tier, he's broken, motherfucker! I mean, even Fiddle Dick said that, and he's, he's a smart guy, he's a smart kid. Um, but then turns out, I said Eddie is garbage, turns out he was garbage, so who should you listen to? I don't know. Uh, but my guess is Lydia is not going to be seen as strong. So let, let's go with the lows. So this is my down two. Ah! Ah! Have you, have you seen Jin's down two? Those of you who haven't, who are, who are new, I'm just going to demonstrate what is known as an attack called Scourge. Same button input, same animation. Jin does this, down two. <laughs> Plus four. If it's counter it. Okay. And now, now let's look at Lydia's. Lydia's is also minus 14. Just like Jin's. But unlike Jin's, we do 12 damage. We do 12 damage, yo, yay! And we got less reach as well, woohoo! Yeah! And on counter hit... Oh god! Look at this follow-up. Ah! 31 damage. You can do a heat engager here, but... When you look at the damage, first time I saw this, I thought the game was bugged. I was like, shouldn't that do like 40? I, I, see, I legit thought it was bugged. Wait, let me show you again. So, down to counter it guarantees heat engager. 29. 
You know, if Dragon Hour Fangway were doing the same sequence, you know, it, it, it would be like 4550. But so this low, garbage. And then we press uh, down free. HACHAKARA! And as you can see, on hit, it's a mighty minus 5. And on block, only minus 16. It has follow-ups here, where we can do down free into a jab. As you can see. And it's, it's a counter it's string. Down back 4 is the low you will see the most. It has decent range and uh, uh, tracking, which is why this is, this is the low you're gonna see them use the most. It does 15 damage. It is only neutral on hit, so if your opponent jabs afterwards and you jab, you will trade. So you, you have no advantage here. It's neutral. And on counter hit... You get nothing. She lost her demo man. She used to have a demo man. You know, the, uh, th this used to be her demo man. This is now a counter hit only effect. So if your opponent is blocking and you do this, you get 20 damage and plus 7 into stats. But if this is blocked, you are dead. You are. It's launch punishable. It says minus 11, but even on block, she automatically goes into stance and she can't block in stance. So, yeah, this is, this is a 20 damage low with poor reach. Poor reach. 20 damage low that is launch punishable on block and that doesn't counter hit launch. It gives you 41 damage on counter hit. The lows feel insanely clunky. You also have this full crouch low. Launch punishable, of course. Knocks down into Fort Fort Free. Fort Fort Free no longer gives Oki. They, they fly so far away. But if they're just one tiny step away from you, this doesn't knock down anymore. You have to be right next to them. And it's launch punishable. And you have to crouch to do it. It's the worst lows I think so far in Tekken 8 as a package. I just can't think of a character with worse lows. Uh, the jab looks like it has a lot of reach, but it doesn't. Uh, same with Downford 1. And she does karate, you know, but then you have a real karate. The devil rate. Jin. This is what real Rade looks like. You see this? Real Karate. Uh, jab down forward one feels feel clunky. What you will do in your neutral is you will do while running one, which is uh, plus six on block. Also feels a little bit problematic with range when you're used to characters like Dragonov, for example, or Claudio. Okay, you know what? I'm stupid. That is really good range. No, you know what? Uh, this whiffed for me all the time, because if someone takes a tiny step to the left, it will whiff. It will not track. Uh, and that's also a problem with her neutral. While running one, you beat by stepping to the left. Ford for two is beaten by, by stepping to the left. But on block, this chips and does uh, plus six, which is nice. And then you have foot for two, which is your 14 frame startup mid. That has a lot of reach, but it, it pales in comparison to Reyna's Raiden. And that's the thing, it's like, Reyna on release, first time I played her, I was like, this is Lydia Mishima hybrid. Which she is. It's just that when you get accustomed to Reyna and then you play Lydia, Lydia in my opinion feels like shit compared to, to Reyna. It feels so much more fluid with Reyna. I wonder where Lydia's gonna end up, you know, with... She's stuck somewhere in between Reyna and Heihachi, or Reyna and Jin. And I feel like all of those other characters just feel better to play than her, although I don't know what Heihachi's going to look like yet, but I assume he's gonna be awesome fucking god mode. He's gonna be real strong on release, I think. But so, 4 for 2 14 frame startup, plus 5 on block, uh, plus 15 on hit, where they have to take your mix up. On block, they can dick jab 
every single option except for this one. Uh, the free option. So that's gonna beat dick jabs. Unless, uh, if you play against King, he can giant swing every single fucking thing you do. Except for this low. And this low is, of course, minus one on... I don't know why it is... I, I have to go into a stance to use this. And I'm rewarded with a gigantic minus one frames. Like, it's, it's this low poke is minus one on block. And, no, sorry, on hit. And on block, it's minus 18. Her lows just keep on winning. Her lows don't know how to lose. We're too good. And then we can do downford one free, which is minus 13. Downford one two. So we have from downford one, we have a mid option and we have a high option. And downford one two is uh, minus four on block. I mean, that's Reyna. While running one. Foot for two into mix up. Uh, that's it. If someone whiffs something, you're gonna do a hop kick to launch them and do a combo. Unfortunately, the damage is not very good. But it is better if you land a free two. And uh, this one is faster now. It was 17 frame startup in Tekken 7. Now it's 15. So that's a staple, 93 damage. I mean, Dragonov laughs at that damage, and so does even Kazuya now, and Reyna, but it's still good damage. It's still good. The problem here for her is that this is from a standing free 2 or big launcher. Most of the time, you will be launching people with up for 4, and there, the damage is insanely scuffed. <laughs> they also nerfed sidestep 4. It's no longer a launcher. But this happened already in Tekken 7. What was a launcher though in Tekken 7 and isn't anymore is down for 4 4. This was actually a launcher on normal hit. <clears throat> but a high. Plus 6 on block. And now it knocks down into a ground pound. Basically, what you're gonna do is rush people down with these mix ups. Uh, wait, this. These mix-ups. Just do stuff like this. You do an attack that goes into stance, attack that goes into stance, and, you know. Uh, but to be honest, that's what you're- you're going to have to overwhelm opponents and knowledge check them with, with this Pitbull-style gameplay, because your neutral is so fucking weak. Back one is a good move. Plus two on block, heat engager. Decent reach. Some tracking. But it doesn't feel that good when I play. I don't know. It's... I think the properties make it seem like a super strong move. But it doesn't feel that good when I play. Make no mistake. Jin's demon paw is way fucking stronger than this move. This move is plus two on block, but... It has limited reach and hitbox. When she's in heat, I don't remember what this stance is called. This one. But you're going to want to access it a lot, that stance. Ford free 4 to go into uh, Gangnam Style. And from gam Gangnam Style, hold up and you get ha having a nerf. And here she has a free way mix-up. <clears throat> so if you press 1 plus 2, this is an unblockable that does a lot of damage. Unblockable. Unfortunately, it does not wall splat. But unblockable high. And they, this is an unseeable mix-up. If you press 1, huge mid-launcher. Huge mid-launcher. This launcher is minus 11 on block, though. So if, it's, so if it's blocked, you eat a 10 frame punish, right? Or an 11 frame. If you press the 2 button... Uh, super heavily damaging wall splat mid. Uh, interestingly, this one is plus on block. Plus six on block. So very strong options here. Very strong options. Y you get this stance, by the way. If you are in heat, and you do while running one on block, or on hit, she automatically goes into this stance. 
she automatically goes into the stance. So that's really nice. You also get this stance by doing uh, in heat. Ford for two. Ford for two in heat is not plus 15 like it normally is. Now it's plus 17. And suddenly the one option is guaranteed, and so is the two option. You get this sequence, and then they have to take this mix up. Mix up, they have to take it. You can also convert this to a full launcher by heat dashing out of that option. So th this is still pretty strong. Yeah, this is still. Pr That's going to be the character. And also, I'm gonna double down on the statement because. The more you use heat during a match, the more she powers up her Polish pride. You see that uh, Polish hawk wing there? Uh, her install. You see here, if I use this stance? One. Three. And now it glows golden. The these stay for the entire match. So you want to make sure you use heat every single round with Lydia. You do that anyway, though. And now with that powered up, uh, a lot of key attacks do more damage. Like down back free counter it. It's now 47. Our ground pound does more damage. You see how much damage the ground pound does? 26. When I have full stacks. Huge damage. It also powers up the... Having a nerf unblockable. And, and the two option. 44 damage. A lot of damage added to her toolkit and many of her most important attacks. Uh, another thing you want to you want to cover with this character is her parries. She, had, she has a lot of strong parries and sabakis. Like on jabs, for example, you'll do 2-4. No, it still does not wall splat. What does wall splat, however, is her low sabaki. And they've also spe uh, sped it up. Down back 3 4 here. Pretty fast, as you can see. The first few frames of this attack, when she does this, she absorbs lows. And it's like a super strong low parry. Very enhanced. Minus 3 only on block. And 22 frame startup. Like, it's not a bad move. And plus 5 on a hit. So let's see what the Sabaki looks like. You see 42 damage. So that's kind of sick. If you're in the open, it's still a super strong low parry. You always have a guaranteed follow-up. That's guaranteed. 62 damage. So that, that stuff is going to be really strong. Uh, and also, I forgot to mention, when you have the, these uh, power-up stocks... So yeah, I'm at 3. It also powers up her command throw. Which does now 46 damage instead of 40. Does not wall splat, however, which which kind of sucks. Oh, Political Storm is still a nice 14 frame punish. Heat Engager. Which is nice. And then in Heat, you get a guaranteed follow-up. That whiffs. So that's good to know. That sort of feels like the character right now. But again, I've been, I've been looking at her and playing her, you know, for a few hours. We'll see what it looks like in a few days, but... What I'm trying to say with this video is that she feels really, really awkward and clunky to play. You have to rush people down with stance mix-ups like this. Yeah, you have to treat her like you're playing Lei or Huarang, in my opinion. I'd be very, very surprised if she ends up being S tier or even A tier. I'd be very surprised. Alright, but that's my little breakdown of Lydia. A little bit of an explanation as to what her basics are. And what I feel about her in this game. Looks great though. Stage is great. But uh, she still bores me.
she was pretty cool when she was released because she was so different compared to the other female characters. She felt more like a fighter. But I feel like they perfected this concept with Reyna. Reyna actually has some fucking gusto and attitude to her. And she feels so fucking good to play. And she has hard-hitting animations. Her rage art is one of the best in the game. Everything just works with that character. And she also inherited Lydia's gameplay and just did it better than Lydia, in my opinion. It just feels better. And she also has the built-in parries, and they just feel better. And then she has a wave dash that electric sparks, and she has an electric. So I, I just think she's so overshadowed by Lydia in a Heihachi reveal trailer. But so the, that's my, uh, you know, impressions of Lydia. Probably won't play her, but if someone else there really likes her, uh, more power to you. I hope she gets fans. I, I, I want all these characters to succeed in the end. But thanks for listening to me. And take care.